This video will discuss federalism and preparation for the AP government exam. Federalism is simply the division and sharing of power between the national government and state governments, meaning there are some things that only the national government can do, there are some things that only the state government can do, and there are some things that both the national and state governments can do. A unitary system, like in China, Britain, and France, concentrates all policy-making powers in, cent in centralized government. A confederal system, like the U.S. under the, under the Articles of Confederation and during the Civil War, spreads the power among many subunits and has a weak central government. A federal system, like the United States has today, divides the power between the central and subunit governments. During the American Revolution, the states reacted to Britain's unitary system by creating the Articles of Confederation, so they went from one extreme end to another, but it ended up with uh, with federalism in the middle ground, the framers had to balance the tyranny of a unitary system with the chaos created by the confederal system, so they found the middle ground with the federal system. There are many different types of powers of the government you should be familiar with. Delegated powers are powers found in Article 1, Section 8 of the Constitution. Delegated powers are powers that the Constitution grants to the federal government. They include the war power, which says that the national government is responsible for protecting the country against the attack and can declare war. They also include the power to, to regulate commerce and foreign commerce, power to tax and spend, and the power to coin money. Implied powers allow the federal government to make all laws which it considers to be necessary and proper for carrying into execution the enumerated powers. Since it was impossible for the framers of the Constitution to predict all the powers Congress will need to function, they had to make the necessary and proper clause. The elastic clause, also known as the necessary and proper clause, can be found in Article 1, Section 8, Clause 18 of the Constitution. More types of powers you should be familiar with are the reserved powers. Reserved or police powers are those held by the states alone. They are not listed like the delegated and enumerated powers are listed, but instead they are guaranteed by the Tenth Amendment. The Tenth Amendment says that all laws not delegated to the national government are given to the states. Reserved powers include regulating trade within a state and conducting elections. Concurrent powers are powers that may be exercised by both the federal government and the state government. Examples would be taxes, the ability to, to establish courts, and the ability to make and enforce laws. Lastly, we have prohibited powers, which are denied to the federal government, the state government, or both. For example, states can't enter into treaties or alliances with other nations or states. Another example is that neither the national nor state government can tax uh, exports. There are several debates in court cases you should be familiar with also. Alexander Hamilton espoused loose interpretation of the of the Constitution, which is the view that the Constitution should be broadly interpreted, while Thomas Jefferson uh, espoused strict interpretation, which means that powers of the national government should be narrowly viewed and sharply limited. Um, Hamilton's arguments relied on the, necessar on the Necessary and Proper Clause, while Jefferson's arguments relied on the Tenth Amendment. McCulloch was the McCulloch versus, versus Maryland was a very important court case, which you should definitely be familiar with. McCulloch was the first major decision made by the Supreme Court under Chief Justice John Marshall about the relationship between the states and the national government. The court basically upheld the power of the national government and denied the right of a state to tax the bank. The court's broad interpretation of the Necessary and Proper Clause paved the way for later rulings and upholding expansive federal powers. The Gibbons versus Ogden case is also another very important one you should definitely be familiar with for the AP Gov exam. Uh, the Gibbons case centered on the conflict between the states and the powers of the Congress. The question rose whether or not New York could grant a monopoly concession on, on the navigation of the Hudson River. The Hudson River forms part of the border between New York and New Jersey, and the U.S. Congress also licensed the ship to sail the, the Hudson. The main constitutional qu question in Gibbons was about the scope of Congress's authority under the, under the Commerce Clause. Um, in Gibbons, the, the court upheld broad con congressional power over interstate commerce. So there are also 
two types of federalisms you should be familiar with. Dual federalism, also known as layered cake, and cooperative federalism, also known as marble cake. Until the 1930s, dual federalism was implemented, which is a system in which the state and federal government remain supreme within their own spheres. There are clear distinctions between federal and state powers in dual, in dual federalism. In cooperative federalism, the powers between the states and national governments are not so distinct. Instead, they are much more intertwined. One of the f one of th uh, one of the federal government's most important tools for influencing policy at the state and local levels is the federal grant. Now, there are two types of grants you should know, categorical and block. Categorical grants are specific grants with many strings attached. And they're given for specific purposes and are subject to federal supervision. School lunches, building of highways and airports are examples of categorical grants. Block grants are broad grants to states for prescribed activities with very few strings attached to them. Examples would be child care, welfare, and education. For example, a block grant can be given to South Florida and South Dakota for education. South Florida might choose might use it to build more schools since there is a growing population down there, but South Dakota might use it to improve conditions in schools like add more technology or more supplies. Often also mandates are try are tied to federal grants, but sometimes mandates are simply unfunded. Most mandates apply um, apply specifically to civil rights and to environmental protection. Full faith and credit refers to the idea that each state should respect the laws, records, and court decisions of the other states. For example, if a criminal from one state flees to another state, it's the other state's responsibility to return that criminal. An example would be if there is a warrant out for someone and that person is found in another state, even though there's and let's say the person stops gets stopped for speeding, but